Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Dust.io and today we have another multi-tool review. If you read the title, you know what's up guys. Today we are taking a look at the Leatherman Curl. I've noticed that there is quite a bit of controversy about this tool, but I'm here to simply share my opinion on the matter. Please note that I have actually used this tool and that's because I recorded this video yesterday and the footage was lost in an unfortunate boating accident. <clears throat> so to start off, I repackaged it in this case it came in. Um, this is exactly how, it'll, how you'll get it if you order it off their website. Inside we have an instruction card. Um, so this is the case. And the instruction card. Pause if you want to read that. And then you'll get the tool just like this, of course, without engravings. And this nylon sheath. It's pretty standard to Leatherman. It has the, the normal snap button. Um, they do last for a while, but they are not impervious, so keep that in mind. So, this is the Leatherman Curl. Up front, it looks quite a lot like a wave. Um, I have a wave here for comparison. So that's the Leatherman Wave and the Leatherman Curl. Um, right off the bat, you'll notice one key difference here. There is no lock bar like there is here. Um, and the next immediate difference is the back. As you have two more outside accessible tools here, a pocket clip and a pocket clip, but you have to order the pocket clip for this separately and not that. Uh, this comes with it. Um, the back of this looks much more like a Leatherman rebar. Oop, excuse me. As you can see, that is, uh, I'd say, quite similar. Now, I'm going to run down on the tools. You have your standard Leatherman wave style knife, nice, locking, as well as a file that is outside accessible with the diamond coat and the cross cut and then the uh, edge cut, whatever you want to call that, which is also locking which means that this is not UK friendly. Next up, you get inside to a standard pair of Leatherman pliers. Um, to note, in my case, and I don't know if this, this is going to be the same for everyone, but they did come with uh, wire cutters that are making contact. And um, that'll probably wear in over time. They'll get looser, but you'll notice it's loose here. And then you get to that point. It stops, and that's just a slight annoyance, but I'm sure it'll wear away. First things first, we're going to look at the bit driver, standard Leatherman bit driver with the two-sided bit, and these are all slip joint. Um, you have a combination tool, which has the bottle opener, can opener, and wire stripper right there. Do note that this will tear up bottle caps pretty bad because it's a can opener. Next you have a pair of scissors, very similar to the Leatherman Wave, if not identical. You have a flathead medium screwdriver, and judging by the thickness, maybe a light prying tool. And the only internal tool that is actually different from the wave, which is a rebar style awl. So, if you notice any signs of wear, that is because I have already recorded this video before and uh, that's very frustrating for me but keep that in mind so if you need to see any scratches they weren't here before if you see any wear they it wasn't here before 
Um, that happened. I'm going to move on to what I think is the most important part of this video. So, the biggest things in question about this video really are the slip joints. How well can these tools hold up to actual use? And I've seen in one other video at least, someone demonstrate that they had a problem with the Leatherman bit ratchet driver actually being able to drill into wood. And I'm going to stop before I demonstrate anything and state an opinion of mine. I really truly think this is a light duty tool. This is, um, it's slim, it's light, it's comfortable, it's there when you need it. And a lot of people would be willing to sacrifice weight for a locking system, which does make it more reliable and I'd say it steps it up to medium to heavy duty. But all those tools, the wave right here as we have it, already exist. We don't really have that light duty tool. Now, before you go and say the sidekick, the wingman at the rev, sure, it's light duty, but it's, it's not high quality. It's not. And I'll have a couple more demonstrations to do with the slip joint systems on three different multi-tools that I have. The two tools that it look, looks like the most, resembles the most, are these two, which obviously have locking tools, but they obviously, obviously have been around for quite a while. So you already have the medium-duty locking version of this. This is simply for someone who wants the slimmest, lightest package possible that is still effective. And I think that they achieved it rather well myself. So, on to the demonstration. We're going to start off with what I was personally worried about the most, and that is augering. Actually drilling a hole with the awl. Now, I have a piece of wood here, I'll note two nails. That is because there's going to be a demonstration of the ratchet screwdriver, but I'm simply going to start and auger a hole on this flat wooden surface. This is a two by four. Oop. And there, just did it. But let's keep going. All right, after that, it hasn't folded over once. You just have to keep in mind that you can't apply downward pressure where you could on a normal awl and it's effectively doing the job. Now do keep in mind that I did demonstrate this exact same thing prior. See that big hole there? Um, in the last video on this side there's the previous hole and I didn't have it fold over that time. So I'm going to try one more time and see if I have a repeat failure. It seems like, to me, as long as you keep the tool straight and you don't apply any back pressure to it, it doesn't have any issues whatsoever. I do keep in mind that I'm not doing my best work because I do have a camera in the way. So I think it augers just fine. I did have one collapse just then, which I wasn't actually expecting. Um, but as long as you keep in mind that it is slip joint and you make sure not to apply any backwards pressure to the that, I don't see there being an issue. On to the next demonstration. We have a screw that can be uh, drilled, just Phillips, and then one that can be flathead because it has a slot. Mind you, I am terrible with flathead screws, and especially at this angle. 
So I'm gonna start off with the standard flat screwdriver because I wanna see if that folds over. All right. Oh, user error and a very weird angle. Uh, well, it's not folding over on me at all. I do apologize for the user error. It's very difficult at that angle. I have to reach onto my desk to do that. But it did it without folding over. Now, let's have a demonstration of the screwdriver standard slotted uh, exchanger. Excuse me. Right. Once again, another terrible angle. Bits aside, the screw might be a little bit stripped, but that's having no issues. And now I'm going to try it with the ratcheting screwdriver. I'm going to use the other screw because it seems to be a little bit less stubborn. So, in the video that I watched where said person had an issue with it folding over, I noticed that he was holding it with his thumb firmly, firmly applied to the spine. And what he may have accidentally done is, with the combination of that being held firmly, And the fact that you have some leverage at the front, it's much easier to break that at the front. He pushed it over on his own. Um, if you keep your thumb away from that spine, or even if you just don't push on it, like I have my thumb rested against this, It doesn't seem to have an issue. But again, I think this defeats the purpose of this tool. This isn't really meant to be drilling into wood. You have power tools for that or a rebar, which has its own dedicated locking 3D Phillips screwdriver. And it will always do this task better than a bit kit on a ratchet extender. Now, that all aside, I'm just gonna test one or two more tools and see how they perform. Um, but you have to understand that these are pretty much all two Leatherman spec. The only difference is that they are slip joint, that's it. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can take these tools out and put them into other tools. They're the same. So I don't have paracord on me or I'd use paracord. So instead, I'm going to use a Q-tip to demonstrate the scissors cutting power. Oops. Camera angles. Now they are slightly uncomfortable, but they tear through that really easy. If we uh, grab a piece, excuse me, the cut seems to be all right. It crimped a little because uh, a lot of force was applied, but it chopped through without any major issues. The scissors are entirely intact. No, they did not fold over in that process. So, I've tested three, four of the tools. Four of the tools. 
all that's left is the can opener and I don't have a can or a bottle to open here. So we'll just leave that to um, all the other tools work properly without an issue. Now the pliers should be identical because there's nothing that's changed between these pliers aside from the fact that they have no replaceable wire cutters and say any other pliers. So today I have a couple of other tools with slip joint systems. As you saw previously, the Leatherman Rev, and I have an original 1993 Leatherman PST. Now, these both have, these all have slip joint internal tools. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating with the tool that I think has the most common length. So I'm going to get the medium driver out of this. There's that. Let's see, are those similar? They're similar enough. And let's see. Oh, there is indeed a slotted flat driver. It's a little bit shorter, so. All right, now I have three flathead screwdrivers on the table, all at least somewhat similar in length. If that helps with lighting. Now, I'm going to be applying pressure to the base of each tool, right around that point where that nub sticks out. Let's start with the cheapest current model. Now, there is nothing to push that over. It takes no effort at all. The PST. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. All right, that's a little bit more pressure than it took on the rev and the curl. Oh, see that divot in my thumb? Let's push even a little bit higher. That takes, I'd say, at least two times the force of the PST. And the PST, while it's worn, mind you, that might actually have something to do with it. It's been around for a long time. Um... This was something people carried before locking tools, like the modern wave, existed. This was the first tool. And a lot of people I've seen in a lot of them on forums, on Facebook, etc., still say that the PST is the best Leatherman available, if you can find it. Probably because it's slimness, it's lightweight. It's easy to carry. And it's there when you need it. I think my point is made. They've simply modernized the PST and the old wave. Because the old wave had the slip joint tools previously as well. They've made a lightweight, slim, easy to carry multi tool. Now, pocket clips aside if you compare these thickness wise it's missing one layer of outer tools which means that it is as you can probably tell slightly thinner it's also I believe slightly more than an ounce lighter the price of the curl is at at Currently, at the recording of this video in 2021, about September 
almost. $80 plus shipping and taxes, of course, but it comes with a pocket clip. The Wave Plus comes in at $99, plus you have to order that pocket clip, and I believe it's $10 plus shipping. So you're looking at what, 100 to 100, and, wait, no, 110 to 115 for the Wave, and 80 to 85 ish for the I mean, of course, with the pocket clip, I mean, for the entire curl. With that in mind, I do believe the curl's price is currently justified. People keep comparing it to stuff like the Rev and the Wingman, but honestly, the quality is massive bounds and leaps ahead, even in the plier head, if you look. I don't know how you can compare those. Look at how stubby the, the Rev is. And then look at how perfectly aligned the uh, curl is. It really is just, um, it's the standard high quality multi-tool. And in my opinion, if you need something lightweight that comes with a pocket clip, that'll be slim and easy to carry, and you don't necessarily need the heaviest duty tools on the planet, then the wave, I mean curl, sorry, excuse me, is perfectly and entirely acceptable. In fact, I like it. I, I'm the kind of person that carries a uh, surge in their left pocket, so don't you even, <laughs> I am uh, probably not the best person to ask if something is comfor comfortable in the pocket, but this is, to me, unnoticeable. And it still comes with a sheath, which does indeed fit that pocket clip. Also to note, I don't have it with me right this second, but I have a Generation 1 uh, wave sheath the old leather ones, and this fits in there perfectly. So that's something. That is indeed something. And that fits in there without an issue, even with the pocket clip. There you see a little bit of a lump right there. So that's the Leatherman Curl. And in my opinion, I think it is worth the price. Uh, my general impression of it is that it's a light duty tool and nothing more. You can't expect out of it what you'd expect out of a wave because it's cheaper, it's lighter weight, and it's slip joint. But a lot of people are looking for something that's slimmer and lighter weight and slip joint. A lot of people still carry Victorinox knives, and that's not a problem because I have in the past myself. I, I often carry a Victorinox Explorer on my person. So do I think you should just go by the wave instead? Now that's entirely up to you. You can spend the extra 20 to $30 to get this in its pocket clip. And it's only a little bit heavier. And it does have locking tools. Although I would miss the all from the curl. Um, if you don't like the weight of this, and you don't like that it's a little bit fatter and you had to pay for the extra pocket clip, just buy a curl. Then again, don't expect it to be the same Leatherman that you're using during construction or maintenance or a house maintenance project. It's simply there to do something that you couldn't do without a multi-tool. And better at everything than this. Which is uh, uncomfortable in general and I don't trust it too much. My general impressions as a person who carries a Surge or a Super Tool are that this does seem to be reliable enough. And I'm going to carry it for the next two weeks as the only Leatherman on my person to see if any failings other than what I have shown in this video pop up. And I'm going to make a two-week update it's going to be shorter than this video. 
because frankly I've made one too many videos about it already. <laughs> um, I hope you liked today's video and we're going to move into our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Transmix. Transmix is, well it's composed of ingredients such as salt, garlic, onion, pepper, herbs, made with all natural herbs and spices, no fillers, no preservatives. Transmix as described by Trent Taylor, the chef who created it, is a wonderful blend of herbs and spices that has been used professionally for over 25 years. Perfect for any protein, potatoes, vegetables, and so much more. To order it, please contact him at thechefTrent at gmail.com. Again, that is thechefTrent at gmail.com. Also, I believe he has a Transmix Facebook page now. Now, note this is not the current product label. This is a prototype bottle that I was given a while ago. Transmix is wonderful. I use it on everything from my burgers, when I'm grilling, to chicken. If you want to bake it, if you want to grill it, it comes out tasting delicious. I make this faux uh, Thanksgiving dinner with stuffing and some Transmix chicken and some cranberry sauce, and it's actually really, really good. On top of that, you can make a fantastic mashed potatoes with just butter, Transmix, buttermilk, and sour cream, and of course, potatoes. And that turns out delicious every single time. I do highly recommend this as it is my favorite seasoning to go on most anything. It really does work for everything. So please give him a shot. Uh, he is a brand new company that's just starting out. And I think he'd really appreciate anyone giving his product a try. That's all I got for you today, guys. And have a good day.